whenever the FCC proposes new rules, they always hold an initial vote, and then after hearing from the public for a couple of months, they hold one last final vote. Now, after the FCC voted to kill net neutrality in a two-to-one vote, it's only been a week or so, but the public has already made their position overwhelmingly clear. They want the FCC to leave the internet alone. In fact, 2.6 million comments have been submitted to the FCC, the overwhelming majority of which are in support of net neutrality. So the question is, have they began to tweak their proposal at all? Have they edited the text to take into account the public's concerns about net neutrality if these new rules go through? Well, not really. So The Verge explains, we were only able to spot a handful of changes in the main text of the proposal, and many of them seem to be the commission blowing its own horn. In a few locations, the commission added information related to a net neutrality court decision that came down on May 1st, after the publication of its first draft. That sounds logical on the surface, since the court upheld the Title II classification for internet providers, but the proposal only briefly brings that up. Instead, it pulls in bits of dissenting opinions from two different judges on the case. In the first instance, the commission includes an excerpt from a judge's dissent arguing that the Title II classification is illegal. In the second instance, the updated proposal includes a dissent from the same court saying that net neutrality rules could violate internet providers' First Amendment rights unless those internet providers are regional monopolies, which is generally the case. These excerpts are mostly meant to lend credence to Pai's argument that Title II isn't legally sound classification for internet providers. Though that issue isn't fully decided, it never hit the Supreme Court. It's been upheld so far. The biggest addition to this version of the proposal is a new paragraph pointing out a legal curiosity that internet service providers may be able to avoid Title II classification entirely by electing to provide a curated internet experience. Imagine a service that just let you access sports sites. The commission also takes a step back to ask how its jurisdiction will be affected by stripping away the Title II designation of internet providers, and this proposal very slightly expands provisions of the 2015 net neutrality order that the commission might keep. That is, should it decide to hang on to anything at all? Should that happen, the commission now proposes hanging on to definitions and provisions meant to avoid impacting ISPs' rights or obligations with respect to other laws or safety and security considerations. It's not much, but it shows a touch more consideration towards the possibility of keeping some rules on the books. And that's basically it. There are also several new pages in the proposal's appendix, but those are mostly statements and dissents that the commissioners issued during the vote last week. The FCC is supposed to take the public's comments into account when making proposals, but if it changed anything in response to the influx of pro-net neutrality comments received so far, it isn't at all evident here. Simply put, after 2.6 million people submitted comments in support of net neutrality, telling the FCC that they do not support these new rules and that they want to keep the internet classified as a utility under Title II of the Communications Act of 1934, the FCC is ignoring them. So we have unelected bureaucrats who can unilaterally destroy the internet, and even though they're required to take into account what we say, they're not doing that. They are supposed to hear out the public, and the public has already spoken. That's what the Administrative Procedure Act does. It prevents unelected bureaucrats from going against the public. And the FCC is, in fact, going against the public. And a senior official at the FCC even argued, quote, we cannot make a decision just based on the number or volume of comments in any particular direction. It has to be based on reasoned decision making and applying the facts. Oh, okay, is that so? So the law that requires bureaucratic agencies from taking input from the public doesn't actually have to listen to the public? So what's the point of the law then? This law has been in place for a very long time, the Administrative Procedure Act, to make sure that unelected bureaucrats do, do not undermine the will of the people. And the FCC is undermining the will of the people. 2.6 million people 
submitted complaints to the FCC, and there would be even more if the FCC wasn't using propaganda and Orwellian doublespeak, but most people who aren't concerned with net neutrality don't know what net neutrality even means or what it's about, but this would harm everyone. I mean, we need, there's more than 300 million people in the country. We need more than 300 million people in this country to submit complaints to the FCC because this is something that will harm every single person in the country, small businesses, news websites on the left and the right. Um, it will harm the consumers because this will allow internet service providers like Comcast and Verizon to charge exorbitant prices and come up with new tiered packages or curated packages. There's a new example from a user on Reddit that showed us what that would look like. There's a lot that could happen, but there's still unforeseen consequences that can't even be imagined yet. But we know that Comcast and Verizon and AT&T and Charter, they're all sitting in a back room thinking about the possibilities if this does go through. And net neutrality, if you explain it to people, and even if you poll them, it's overwhelmingly popular. So three people, technically two people, because it was a two to one vote, both Republicans, two people should not be allowed to destroy the internet as we know it, especially if the public has expressed overwhelming concern about these proposals. So these two idiotic Republicans are looking out for themselves because Ajit Pai, the FCC chairman, used to serve as an attorney for Verizon. And if you don't think he will be rewarded handsomely when he gets out with a really nice job and some bonuses, you are horribly mistaken. So he doesn't care about ruining the internet for everyone if it means looking out for himself and getting a job. Meanwhile, these ISPs will be laughing to the bank. So this cannot stand. If you have not submitted a complaint, you have to do this. If you even have just a modicum of concern about net neutrality, I would implore you to please submit a complaint. You will get a ticket number. You can do this at humanistreport.com. There's a link that goes directly to the FCC complaint website and allows you to file an official complaint. You need to call them, write them. We have to do everything that we possibly can right now because this is dangerous. This is really, I think, the most threatened the internet ever was because now we have a Republican who has gone rogue, who's not listening to the people who can unilaterally kill the internet at the behest of internet service providers. And that is a scary thought. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.